Okay, so thanks for the opportunity to present today. As Chris said, my name's Eric Lenhoff. I'm a weed scientist at New Mexico State University, and I focus on managing invasive plants as well as dealing with weeds in agricultural systems, mostly in chili and onion production and small horticultural crops like that. And recently getting into controlling weeds more in landscaping. And with all of those, we're always looking for more sustainable way, ways for weed management. And I kind of stumbled into this electricity thing through a colleague, um, Paul Neer, who is an electrical engineer at New Mexico State. He's actually at the Physical Sciences Laboratory at New Mexico State. And this is his idea, and he started working with me as the weed scientist to try to implement it. So um, I'll start and also add that funding for this came from the Western IPM Center out of UC Davis. So thank you very much to them and some additional funding from my university to help move this along. Okay, so the first question is, why would we even want to kill weeds with electricity? And you're all IPM specialists, so you probably already have good answers to this. But just one example is, we've got something like this tree of heaven growing in somebody's landscaping. And there are lots of ways that you could deal with that. You could spray herbicide on it, but that might have some off-target effects on other plants. If you try to dig it out, you're going to make a mess with the landscaping. If you cut it off with a saw or some clippers, it's probably just going to grow back. So as an alternative, electricity might be used in this situation to have a very targeted effect and take out one plant without causing off-target impacts. Um, another situation is xeriscaping. You're probably all familiar with that in California, but here in Las Cruces, New Mexico, most people don't have lawns, they rather have rock gardens, and they might have a few ornamental plants in there, but they try to keep the other plants from growing through having a weed fabric or using a lot of herbicides to, present, to prevent weed growth. And we've come up with a way that we could potentially use electricity to prevent these unwanted plants from growing up through the xeriscaping. And one final one that I'll talk about today is using electricity to prevent vines from climbing up on structures. All right, so I thought it would be useful to have a very, very brief introduction to actually what even is electricity before getting started here. So electricity can be thought of as a physical phenomenon that's associated with matter with an electrical charge. But that's not a very useful definition. So let's look at the components of electricity. So you've probably all heard of these terms, volts and amps and resistance and things like that. So current is the flow of electrons and it's measured in amps or amperes. And my electrical engineer friend would probably not like this analogy, but I kind of like to think of it as water flowing through a pipe as an analogy. So the current is the flow of electrons, or if you're thinking of a pipe, it could be thought of as the water flowing through the pipe. Whereas volts are the measure of the electrical potential between two points. So if you think of this again as the pipe example, it could be thought of as the pressure required to move the water through the pipe. And then um, resistance is the opposition to that flow of electric current. Thinking of this in terms of water, resistance would be dictated by the diameter of the pipe with a bigger pipe having less resistance. And it could also be the roughness inside of the pipe that could affect the resistance. The amount of charge is measured as a coulomb. So it's the amount of electricity carried by one amp in one second. And You've all heard the term watts. That's the measure of power. So it's the electrical work performed when one amp flows across one volt of potential. And there's relationships between all of these things. And some of the most important is I, which represents current equals volts divided by resistance. Or another way you could rewrite that formula as volts equals current times resistance. So the point here is that 
if resistance goes up, then the voltage has to go up if the current stays the same. And I'll explain a bit more why this is important. Um, if you're one of those taking the exam after this is all over, remember V equals I times R. That's an important formula for how we're thinking about how these systems work. Okay, here's the question that has an obvious answer. Can electricity kill plants? You've probably all seen trees that were struck by electricity and maybe have seen the aftermath of that. So yeah, certainly electricity can kill plants. With lightning, we're talking about something like a million volts and 100,000 amps, which equals around 10 billion watts of power. So that's an incredible force delivered very, very rapidly, and it has some drastic effects on plants. And at this point, it's worth pointing out that something as little as 10 milliamps can actually be lethal. And for most humans, that wouldn't be a lethal dose, but for somebody with a potential heart problem, 10 milliamps is what's considered to be the maximum dose that could be safe. So for these systems, we're trying to think of how can we keep the milliamps at 10 or lower. Um, 120 volts can be lethal. So that's what your house is at, 115, 120, something like that. So we're talking 1200 watts in these potentially lethal systems. So how can we make this practical? You might be familiar with some tools that are already out there. So there's a company called RootWave, and you can find their information here at rootwave.com. They've come up with this system using a tractor-mounted um, set of electrodes that delivers an electric dose to plants. And these essentially work by arc discharge of electricity to the plants and it's a very rapid heating of the plant so that electrical energy gets turned to heat energy and the plants boil and essentially the cells explode and the plants die so that's one way that electricity can be used but this thing is still using something like 30 to 50,000 volts to deliver that electricity so it's not what i would consider a safe system for most operators to use. It has very specialized settings, mostly in organic farming, but it's not something we're going to recommend for a homeowner to be managing weeds on their property. So the way we're considering this is reducing the current to a safe level. So we don't want to boil plants or explode plants. We want to use electricity to treat them in a more controlled way. So in the system I'm going to be describing, we're using a very low current in the, the low milliamp range, so two to 10 milliamps, but delivered over a long time to affect the plants. So I am having to advance by rolling the little thing on my mouse and it's kind of sensitive. So we can vary the dose that an individual plant gets by keeping the current constant, but varying the time that the plant's exposed to the electricity. So that's how we might kill a tree over a long period of time rather than with a very high dose over a short period of time. So, so far there are two, actually three main applications that we're using this for. We're calling one the tree killing operation, TKO, and that's used to kill small trees mostly is what we've used it on so far up to four inches in diameter approximately is where we're using it or smaller and we're also using it in a way we're calling wko or weed killing operation trees could be weeds too but just for simplicity we're keeping tko for for hardwood trees and wko for other things we're also using it to control climbing vines as i indicated earlier, but that's still in the WKO class for us. So here's a simple conceptual diagram of how this is set up. We have a current source here. Um, let's see if I can get a laser pointer. All right, so we have a current source, and I want to point out now that even though this says AC line power, 
we're saying that's where the initial electricity can come from. But this is a specialized device that reduces the current but increases the voltage. And with that said, you cannot just plug this into an outlet in your house and stick the wires into a tree and hope to kill it. You, you might, might kill the tree, but it creates a very dangerous situation. So again, I wanna point out, this is a, a device that's been built specifically to do what we're trying to do here. And it lowers the current and boosts the voltage and it actually converts it to a DC signal instead of AC. So it's direct current. So anyway, you have a current source, then you have a wire that connects to a ground rod, and then you have another wire that's connected to a screw or a nail or something that's put into the tree somewhere down near the ground. And in this case, what goes into the tree is the cathode, which is the negative wire. And what goes into the ground rod is the anode, which is positive. So you end up with current flowing this way. And this was really confusing to me. It still is confusing. But in electricity, even though the current flows this way, the flow of electrons is actually the opposite direction. So electrons are flowing from here into the tree and down into the soil. Um, None of that really matters because this will work either way you hook it up, but electricity running through metal creates corrosion. So you're either going to get corrosion at the ground stake or at the screw that you put into the tree. And you just kind of have to choose where is best to have that corrosion happening. And we can talk more about that later, or you could ask questions about that. So I'll come back at the end and talk a little bit more about the practical ways of using this. So this is an example or a picture where a tree was killed in uh, Paul's yard, the creator of this. So this is, I believe, a small Siberian elm that was growing on his property. He has a pecan orchard there and he always gets unwanted trees popping up in there, but he doesn't want to use chemicals. So he treated this tree, um, this diameter, couple inch diameter, probably took a few days to treat at a low amperage. And it's just a before and after picture of the treatment. What we found in general is that the amount of current required or the ampere hours required to kill a tree is proportional to the diameter of the tree. So this is showing the diameter going from two all the way up to 10 centimeters. And there's sort of a linear response of the amount of ampere hours needed to kill the tree based on diameter. So bigger trees require a longer time to treat. So hopefully that's pretty clear. You might recognize this tree, the shrub, it's salt cedar or tamarics. And we weren't really in this application trying to come up with a way to kill tamarics. Really what I was interested in finding out was, does the herb, sorry, does the electricity act similar on these trees to what a herbicide would do? So maybe you've seen dose response studies where you apply several doses of herbicide and then look at how that affects the mortality of the tree or the biomass. Well, so that's what we did in this case. We treated a bunch of salt cedars. They were all in pots in this case. And we treated them for 0, 12, 24, 36, or 48 hours at 2 milliamps. So that ended up with these different treatments across the x-axis. And then we recorded the change in biomass for the plants. So those that were not treated, so 0, they had a lot of biomass produced. When they're treated for 12 hours, which is 24 milliamp hours, um, biomass was reduced. And by the time we got out here to treating them for 48 hours, then they um, did not put on any new biomass after the treatment. So essentially, we killed them at that dose. So again, this wasn't really trying to demonstrate how we could kill tamarix. We we're just trying to understand how 
trees might respond to different doses. So it's more like proof of concept that this is acting as something that's dose dependent. OK, um, we did lots of other experiments on killing trees and we're very confident that it works, but every tree is different. So as of this point, we don't really have a prescription for how to do this because we're still experimenting on unwanted trees around Paul's house and around my house and just trying to to hone in on how it's working and hopefully eventually be able to come up with guidelines for how to do it. OK, so moving on to weed killing operation, WKO. This is also at Paul's house, and he just laid out these big strips of chicken wire down on some Bermuda grass that was growing near his driveway. And he wanted to get rid of this grass, so he put the screen out and let it run for probably three or four days and then moved this whole bit of chicken wire over and did it again. And I'll say that did work. It ended up killing the Bermuda grass, but it's not necessarily something I would recommend because if you're trying to kill large patches of existing vegetation, then I believe we haven't shown this, but I would guess there may be a fire hazard with that because the vegetation dries down. And if this thing generates a spark, then it could ignite that. So. Even though this works, we're not really recommending this as a treatment option, but I'll show you what we are doing with this. Um, before getting into that, I'll just let this video play and you can kind of get a visual for what's going on. So we just set this up as a demonstration to show what's happening. And I've got two pots. Each of them has barley planted in it. We just planted barley because it grows rapidly and it's easy to work with and we did a time lapse video of this barley growing so this on the left is a control pot so nothing preventing the barley from growing on the right we have this screen resting over the top of the soil it's elevated and not touching the soil and it's connected with the negative wire coming in here from our current source there's a screw protruding out of the pot back here that's our ground and that completes the circuit and it goes back in. So here's the positive, here's the negative, and you've got a complete circuit there. And what that means is this screen is electrically charged. So the plants grow up and if they come into contact with that screen, they experience the effects of that electricity, whatever that may be. And as you'll see, it does kill the plants or at least prevent them from growing past that screen. So I'll just let that go for a bit more. So as you can see, some of these barley managed to grow through. This is quarter inch mesh on the screen and some of them get lucky and they manage to go through that, but eventually they get unlucky and they touch the screen and once they make contact with it, then they slowly die. So this whole time lapse video was, I believe, about eight days. And we just took photos every 10 seconds and stitched this all together into a video. So you can see in two minutes here what happens over about a week of growth. And again, the plants on the left are growing and they're healthy. The ones on the right are touching this electricity. And there's nothing drastic there. You're not seeing sparks. You're not seeing electrical discharge. It's just a slow death for these plants. OK, so imagine that screen that you just saw over the pot of barley. And now we're using that outside in a real application in xeriscaping. So down here you can see a little bit of screen that's exposed. This is covered up with mulch and we were preventing weeds from growing into this plot. We have some marigolds planted in little holes that are cut out in the screen. And this thing in the middle is just a soil moisture probe that's going in there. So that's one way that we've been using it. Here's 
Um, this is the same picture on the right, but this is a plot with only mulch in it, so just to demonstrate that it is electricity having the effect and not only the mulch. So these are all weeds. You can see the marigolds in there being overrun by a variety of different weeds. So looking at that in terms of the data that we collected, um, we actually had six different treatments. We had a control, which was just bare ground. We had the mulch only treatment, which is M. We had the screen only because somebody might argue that, well, the screen itself is preventing weeds from growing, even if it's not connected to electricity. We had the screen plus the mulch, and then we had a screen that was electrified but not covered by mulch, and finally the screen with electricity and mulch. And in this case, each color is a different date in 2019, and the y-axis is the cover of weeds, so the amount of weeds in these plots. And you can see in the control and in the mulch and the screen only, the weed pressure just kept increasing over time. Um, the screen and the mulch, even when it wasn't electrified, actually prevented some weed growth, but there was still quite a bit. But when we electrified the screens or electric and covered with mulch, we had really good results keeping the weed cover in these plots down to maybe 5%. So that was pretty good. But what we did notice was during our rainy season, which is July, August, September, the ground was staying a bit saturated and it, the screens don't work well when the ground is wet because as you remember, I talked about resistance. So if the ground is wet, that means there's almost no resistance for the electricity to flow directly to the ground. If the ground is really dry, electricity is not going to flow through dry ground very well. So it needs to flow through a wet plant instead. But if the ground is wet, then the electricity takes the path of least resistance. So there's no resistance. It goes straight to the ground and it does not flow through plants. And that was allowing some plants to survive in these wet conditions. So we tried another experiment where we, instead of using mulch, we used a landscape and gravel. And in this case, we have a control here. So a very weedy control plot. Um, we had gravel only. We had the screen lying on the ground covered with gravel and the screen was hooked up to electricity. And then the one that really worked for us was we basically made a screen sandwich. So we had gravel, screen, um, gravel on the ground with the screen on top of it, and that was covered with more gravel. And the gravel on the soil surface prevents the screen from directly contacting the soil surface and the gravel covering the screen is to protect people or animals from stepping on that screen and we had multiple rep mul uh, multiple replications of this set of treatments and i'll just show you some more graphs here so in the control so no electricity no screen no gravel we had very high weed cover increasing over time. In the gravel only treatment, the gravel initially suppressed the weeds, but as you can imagine, they penetrate through that gravel and increase over time. Where the screen was directly touching the ground, especially with the weight of the gravel pushing it down to make contact with the ground, even when electrified, it was not very effective because it shorted the ground too often. But when we had that screen sandwich, so the screen surrounded by gravel, it was extremely effective at preventing weed growth. So we had almost no weeds in there. And that was in 2020. We did the same experiment in 2021, let it run even longer, and we saw the same results. Weeds increased over time in all these other plots, but in the gravel sandwich plot there, weeds were kept down to just two to three percent cover in those plots. All right, one other method that we were using is to try to prevent weeds from climbing up onto structures. And this idea was brought to us by the local utility company, El Paso Electric, because they have problems with weeds climbing up power poles and that becomes um, a hazardous situation of potentially a, a fire hazard as these weeds end up into the power lines. 
and they were interested if this system could be used to replace herbicide in preventing these weeds from climbing up the poles. So we set up just a really simple experiment. And in this case, um, the picture's cut off a little bit, but this is a solar panel. And the solar panel is charging our, um, our WKO device, which is attached to the pole here. So these are 20 watt solar panels and they're running our, our WKO system in this case. So it doesn't have to run off of AC that's converted to DC. We have direct DC current here. But anyway, we set these poles up. Um, one of them is treated with electricity. The other is the control. And this is a close up. On both of the systems, we had a screen down low, chicken wire actually, that gave the weed something to climb on. And then we have a little break between the, the lower screen and the upper screen. And the upper screen was either charged with electricity, as shown on the right, or not charged with electricity. And as you can see, the weeds climbed no problem. This is um, field bindweed, Convolvulus arventus. So it climbed just fine up the screen that wasn't electrified. But on the one where this screen was electrified, then the weeds would climb up and touch the screen and it actually got a little burn on there, which is interesting. So all that charge gets discharged into the plant all at once and it created some local burning right there. And this doesn't kill the weeds, which is okay because the power company's not necessarily concerned about killing the weeds. They just wanna make sure that the weeds don't climb up the towers. So this is a graph similar to the last one, um, but here we just have two treatments. We have the control and the treated poles. And this one shows the height of the plants. So in the controls over time, over the different dates here, the weeds climbed higher and higher up the pole. But in this one that was electrified, the weeds did not climb at all. They couldn't establish and climb up the screen. Same thing with cover. We estimated how much of that pole was covered with weeds, and that increased up to 50% or so by the end of the experiment in the control. But in the treated one, the, again, the weeds were not able to climb up the pole. So very effective treatment in that situation. Okay, so some of you may be asking, well, how does all of this work? And the simple answer is we actually don't know the mechanism by which the plants are being killed. Um, and that's not uncommon. Even with some herbicides, it's still not known how they kill the plant. It's just known that they do. Um, we know more about that now than we used to, but nonetheless, it's not always obvious how plants are dying. So with this system, we do know that it's not directly related to photosynthesis because the current has no reason to flow through the leaves. The leaves are not experiencing any of this electricity because it's completing that circuit going down through the roots and back into where it's connected. Um, on the, that's on the TKO system where it's connected by a screw. Um, it's not likely to be anything related to nutrient uptake, although that would be affected, but the plants die too rapidly for that to be the case. This might bring back nightmares from high school biology or something, but it's well known that life is really based on the flow of electrons through cells. And this system is undoubtedly affecting the flow of electrons. So we don't know exactly which of these pathways may be affected by all of this, but the electricity limiting the, or altering the flow of electrons certainly has something to do with how this works. And we've also demonstrated that electricity is affecting um, things such as cellular respiration. So I won't go into too many details, but we did an experiment where we were treating plants in the laboratory and we had them in airtight chambers that we could measure photosynthesis and respiration in. And we found that in the treated plants, cellular respiration was lower than in the untreated plants. So it's doing something to respiration, but we're not sure if that's the cause of mortality or not. 
We did one other really cool experiment, which I'll just share briefly with you. We treated a whole bunch of Arabidopsis, and these are the little mustard plants, which for these plants, um, the entire genome has been sequenced. So if you connect, collect RNA samples from these plants and analyze those, you can tell exactly what processes the plant was upregulating or downregulating at any given time. So we did this experiment where we treated plants for several hours, up to 12 hours or 24 hours, and then compared those to the controls. And no need to get hung up on details here, but this is showing based on the RNA samples that there are a whole lot of things that are upregulated in the plant that's being treated compared to the ones not being treated. So just for example, this glutathione transferase that is a defense response for plants. So it's common to see that in plants that have been sprayed with herbicide, for example. There's a lot of other things being upregulated as well. Uh, pathways that indicate attack by insect or response to a fungal disease. All of these activities in the plants are being upregulated in an attempt to defend themselves from whatever it is that they perceive to be attacking them, which is electricity in this case. There are also things that are downregulated. So this shows things that are um, happening much less in the treated plants compared to the untreated. So very important things like RNA binding and building of the cytoskeleton. These things are downregulated in the plants treated with electricity. So this doesn't necessarily relate to IPM, but it's it's fascinating trying to understand how these plants are experiencing electricity and what processes that's affecting. Okay, so getting on to how to actually use this thing. Um, I won't go over this wiring diagram, but I wanted you to have that. I know this presentation is recorded, so you can go back and look at this. If you want to build one of these systems, here is the very simple basic wiring diagram for how you would do it. So you could do that if you have some, some basic knowledge of building circuits. Um, but again, no need to go through the details on that. What I will say is that the, the systems we've used have all been custom built. And we initially started doing this and we thought, this is great, we're going to patent this and we're gonna be millionaires, then we'll retire. But that never happened, right? When we got the patent attorneys involved in this, they found that a company in Germany had obtained a similar patent just months before we put in our application. And I haven't been able to get much detail on what they're doing in Germany, but their patent is extremely broad. It simply says they're killing plants using direct current. And, and that's about it. So we're trying to work with the attorneys to try to figure out if there's some way that we could license this and actually start you know, having some of these things built so it can be more widely adopted here in the US. But in the process of all of that, we discovered that a simple piece of laboratory equipment that, you know, it's all over the campus here at NMSU in the biology department are these electrophoresis machines. So these are things that somebody will use in a lab when they're working with DNA or RNA to run various tests. And it turns out this machine does almost exactly what this thing that we built is doing. It delivers a constant current and you can alternate the voltage on it. So this is showing it's operating at 300 volts here. And that's similar to what our system does. We are running at a current of less than 10 milliamps typically, but around 250 volts. So this piece of equipment can be used, and we did buy some of these and have used them in our experiments, and they work for, for treating plants. So I'm not endorsing this company, and I'm not saying that this should be used outside of the specs that it's actually designed for, but it, it happens to work for us. So I'm going to stop with that. I'm sure there will be lots of questions on how to actually do this and what to expect. But again, I want to thank the Western IPM Center and my Agricultural Experiment Station for providing some funding on this. And thanks to all the people who helped. And 
my email address is there. So with that, I'll be happy to answer some questions. Great, thank you, Eric. You're welcome.